Kansas City. No rivalry in all of sports is more intense than the Raiders versus the Chiefs. It's a simmering cauldron, a brew made up of years of cheap shots and championship games. It bubbles over every season, twice. Holy Toledo, it's a free for all. These are two of the NFL's most successful franchises. Every game is a war. When it's time to play the Raiders, uh, it has to do with, with uh, life and death, winning football games. For 60 minutes, it, it's hell on earth. In a rivalry where anything goes, the unthinkable is happening. Players are ripping off one jersey and putting on the other. And the defectors have come from every rank. On the defensive line, Chester McLaughlin jumped from the silver and black to the red and gold. And former Kansas City first round pick Harvey Williams scored five times as many touchdowns as a Raider. And number 29, Albert Lewis, who for 11 seasons batted away Raider passes, ended his career doing the same to the Chiefs. And now, quarterback Rich Gannon, a Chief until 1998, led Oakland to the Super Bowl in 2002. And coaches, too, have made the switch. Now, the origin of this strange wave of defections might be traced back to a single man, arguably the ultimate Raider, who became the most valuable Chief. When Marcus Allen went to the Chiefs, that was one of the worst things I think that could have ever happened to a great Raider player go being on the Chiefs team. The decision to leave is difficult, but it pales in comparison to telling the boss that you're headed to his arch rival. Gunther, when you were with the Raiders and you had to go tell Al Davis that you were leaving to coach the Chiefs, I mean, how did you feel about that? That's like working for the the, the uh, CIA and then saying, well, now I'm going to have to work for the KGB. That's kind of what it was like. <laughs> I, I remember he called me at midnight uh, after he had heard that I was going to leave. And as he says, <laughs> um, Gunther, you're not going to wear red, are you? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm afraid I am. <laughs> Perhaps this play from 1995 best illustrates this rivalry's current state of confusion. Here, Raider, all-pro Chester McLaughlin, who later became a chief, leaves his lane as former Kansas City, later Oakland quarterback Rich Gannon, hands off to Marcus Allen, a Raider legend who was at the time the Chiefs' starting halfback. Allen has a sure score, if not for the speed of Raider cornerback Albert Lewis, who happens to be a member of the Chiefs' all-time team. Confused? So am I. That's sort of strange to me. I mean, it's like, you know, they have the Hatfields and the McCoys, and they keep, you know, switching sides. Do you ever, like, sit down and debrief him? Just as we know that the Raiders would never do that with a former Chief, of course, we would never do that with a former Raider. No, we never ask them about their snap count or their uh, coverages or anything else. We simply try to do it in an honest, uh, above-board fashion. They didn't have to. I, I was very open about it. You were right? ready to sing like oh, a yeah, canary, I, I right? I was like a computer going off. Not debrief me like what, what the Raiders did, but getting me out of my Raider habits was more, of, okay, that's the old Raider right way, get it out of it. It's that, we don't do it here. We do it the best way possible, the chief way. What was your perception of the Raiders? I had been brainwashed to the point, you know, in Kansas City that I just had such disdain for this team and for this organization and everything they stood for. That indoctrination came from Marty Schottenheimer, who as head coach of the Chiefs, won 18 of his 21 games against the Raiders. Marty had a special thing about the, the Raiders. Because I've been in that, in that locker room before you guys play the Raiders, and, and I've never heard more four-letter words in my life. Don't let them keep us poor. When it got to be Raider week, we all knew it. To make a great rivalry, there's got to be some deep-seated hatred. Well, Marty made it personal. The bastards got three points. Let's go. It was alluded to that this was a, an organization that uh, might uh, nefariously try to win. I know that, Holmes. You'll have your opportunity to get them, too. And it was all untrue. I'm serious. It was all untrue because it took me being here to see for myself. The Raiders would make up their own rules. And that used to trouble me. I always felt like the Raiders were going to try to intimidate you. 
And I always told our football team, we may lose, but they are not going to intimidate us. The last game that I coached as a chief in Oakland was one of the most memorable victories of my coaching career. We were down 14 to 3. But our guys still, in a meaningless football game, believed you go after them, you play them tough, you'll find a way to win. We came back and beat them. It was a great feeling. Hey, 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 let's go. This is very brief, man. We want to get the hell out of this dungeon. Listen to me. Oakland Stadium may have been a prison for Schottenheimer, but it turned into an oasis for Rich Gannon. A lot of guys that stepped up big time. Not the least of which is Gannon. Yeah, Rich. Now, Carl, I've seen you with players who have left the Chiefs, and before a game, you won't acknowledge them. You won't even say hello to them. Now, will you go up to Rich Gannon and talk to him before the game or not? I, I, I would do it for two reasons. One would be because I sincerely do enjoy, respect, and like Rich Gannon. The other reason I would do it is simply to irritate the hell out of you-know-who, who hates to have his players talk with the opposition particularly in pre-game. So yes, I do plan to go up and put my arm around Rich Gannon and tell him what a great person he is. It doesn't matter if Marcus Allen is wearing a Kansas City Chief uniform or Gannon is wearing a Raider uniform. The mystique, the bitter rivalry will always be there. It's never gonna go away. So apparently the rivalry lives on as team loyalty supersedes past friendships. And as long as Chester McLaughlin wears one color and Rich Gannon wears another on the field, they'll be enemies. Now that I wear the red, it's that it's boiling up every time. And we could play another team and I feel okay, but when it's the Raiders, it, it pulls you in. <laughs> you know? Yeah, really, it's like uh, the Godfather. Every time you try to get out, they pull you back in. I'm going to do all I can, every ounce of my essence and existence, I'm going to try to do all I can to beat the Chiefs. And we're going we're gonna to beat these guys, Steve. I'm not predicting, but we're going to get these guys. Before you play the Raiders this year, will you go out on the field and talk to any of the Raiders? No, I won't have, I won't have anything to do with them. Now, why is that? Because I'm the Chief, and I'm happy to be here, and it's personal. And it has to do with kicking their ass and winning on that particular Sunday. And all I care about on that day is the Chiefs beating the Raiders. If Al Davis called you up and said, Marty, I want you to be the head coach of the Raiders. No, 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 no. I wouldn't uh, be interested, thank you. When we return, the untamed